Many of you, many of us, many, uh, many people globally uh, know uh, Mr. Jack Ma for his extraordinary uh, experience in, as an entrepreneur, as a business person uh, who has been built uh, Alibaba. Many of you also know him as an educator who was once a, an English teacher uh, in China, but whose foundation, the Jack Ma Foundation, has gone on to be an extraordinary support to teachers and head teachers across uh, rural China, but, uh, but also uh, globally. And we also now know him as a UN advocate for the Sustainable uh, Development uh, Goals. It's a huge uh, honor and excitement for us all to have him here with us today. It took a huge effort from Chan. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Jack Ma. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's my great honor to be invited. And thank you, Chen, for your passion. Finally, I understand what this uh, FWE means. <laughs> yes, I, I'm very touched by your passion. And thank you, OECD and Andrew, for your the uh, pizza. And every time I discuss with you about education, I'm inspired. And I know there are a lot of things we should do, we can do, and we must do. And I think this time is the most critical period for the world to discuss the most important and critical topic that is education. The world is changing so fast, and I think the thing that we need to change fast is education system. And I'm not the expert. I'm an amateur, I'm not a pro on the education. I was trained to be a high school teacher. Um, I, I failed exam, uh, exams for Andrew University again, again, again. So after three years, of hard working, I was accepted by Hangzhou Teachers College, which considered the fourth or fifth class of the university in China, but I think that's the best school I've ever heard, the best university in the world. And they trained me to be a high school teacher. And at that time, only the worst students in China can be, should be go to the teachers. That's why the education is a big problem. But I'm happy to see the piece of result. China has a great good result this year. And um, the world changed, as I said, in probably 20 years. 50% of the jobs that today we have will disappear. We'll create another you know, 50 or 60% of the jobs which we never can even imagine. Where the education should be, and where our kids that should worry about. We all worry about ourselves, we should worry about kids where they can have jobs, they can survive in the next few centuries. And what are the lives that we and our people and our kids should have? These are all the things that we should discuss about. And I said to China, China last year we had 12 million new babies born, which somebody said 17, but I think like around between 12 million to 17 million. China, in the next 50 years, will be decided by these 12 to 17 million people. And these 12 to 17 million people what kind of education system we give them, how we can improve them, that also influences the world. And I was trained as an English teacher. At that time, China's just start to have English courses. We don't have enough teachers, English teachers, to teach English. So my teacher, she was teaching math. So in the morning, she, go, she went to learn ABC, and in the afternoon, she came to teach us. The thing she inspired me, she said, Jack, your pronunciation is better than mine. <laughs> Most of the courses that I am good at, all in, because the teacher is good. The teacher encouraged me to go ahead. And the, some of the courses are the terrible course study result on chemistry, because my chemistry teacher does not like me. <laughs> so the teacher don't like me? If the teacher like me, I work hard. And I find most of the students doing things like that. And from the result of the test, I was not considered to be a good student. You know, I always fail exams. The teacher said, this is, you know, they write on the back board and say, this is what I taught. And when we taste the exams, I have to answer exactly the same. But I think that is not true. So I always criticize, put at the bottom. But two years passed, those great students, my classmates, in the primary school, middle school, universities, they still stay there and we're running fast. 
I never stop studying. I think society is the best university, and I enjoy that. A lot of people learn to work, and the future we should work to learn. We should continue to learn all the times. And I never got one day training to be helping your CEO, my venture capitalist, early days said, Jack, you should give your CEO job to the others because you don't know how to be a CEO. And I said, no, I don't know how to be a CEO. But I, later I found I could be a good CEO because that the skills that I learned from being a teacher. I call myself CEO, Chief Education Officer. I learned everything I learned from being a teacher. Inspire your students. Trust your students. Believe in your students. Enable your students. All the teachers want their students to be excellent. All the teachers want the students to be good. This guy become a banker, that's a mayor, that is an engineer, that's a scientist. No teacher wants his students to be in prison, bankrupted, or in trouble. When you have a good heart, you let the students, the students can feel it. This is the way I do as a senior in my company. I trust my people. I ena we enable them. We do anything we can to make people like a people, not people like a worker. So today a lot of people fighting for or work hard for education. And we try to solve the problem of putting everybody has the chance to get education. That means we need, uh, to me, I think education is just like a food. You need to feed the fit people. So we should have food for everybody, for every kids. This is very important. Every child, every child in this world should have the equal education opportunities. But the other thing which is more important, what education we should give our kids. There are two things today in the whole world are very, very important. The first is everybody has a chance. Second, everybody should have the right education thing, content. So, what I believe that at the industry period, everything we want to make standardization. But the AI period, we want a differentiation, make everybody different. Correct. IT is to enable yourself. DT, the data technology, is to enable the others. The real fairness of education is differentiated. Make everybody, every kid, have the right education that he needs. Make everybody be the best of himself. And I always think a school should be like a zoo. It's all kinds of animals. This is what I did in my company. I hate to turn my company become a farm, group of chickens or ducks. I want all kinds of animals. They're versatile. So, you know, you can never judge, because we have KPI. We should not give a KPI for a chicken, how many eggs a chicken would have, and put that KPI on a lion, on a tiger. Lion, tiger, stupid. <laughs> so we have to have in making sure the zoo's like a zoo, and, a, you know, and our company like a zoo. In the industry period, when we make the assembly line that make every people like a product should be seen. Whether you're good, you're smart, you're stupid, this is the way that you do. You use it the food you eat. And education become that kind of assembly line. It's a disaster. Animal has the instinct. Machine have the intelligence. But human being have the wisdoms. In the digital period, we have to think very clearly, what is the difference between human and machines? If we worry about machine would replace people, because people and machine are too similar. If we worry about machines, that's the problem, not machine, the problem of human beings. So if you do everything on a standardization, it can be replaced. Unfortunately, I'm on the uh, internet business. We know that if, if everything is standardized, if everything is logic, it will be a problem. We designed our own technology 15 years ago. At that time, we, we do not call it AI. We call AI Alibaba intelligence. We do not call it artificial intelligence. We find everything if there's a logic. If there's logic, machine can do better. If there's no logic, people can do better. See? Sometimes we don't know why this boy loves that girl. There's no reason he loves her, or there's no reason she loves him. But they're loved. 
But when you hate somebody, there's a logic. When you want to do some bad things, there's a logic. If there's a logic, machine can do better. And what we did in our company is that we teach machine to, uh, to arrest, to catch, to find all the bad be behavior of people, arrest the bad guys. Because we have so much money transaction every day. People try to steal money. We have a plan, we have a logic, Mach machine can do better. So, I think in the digital period, if you focus too much on standardization, you will be replaced by machines. Human beings have to do the things that should be creative, constructive, feelings, that machine can never be replaced. If a machine will never embrace the change, human being can change. Machine will never continue to learn like a human. And we, if we try to live like people in the past century, it's going to be a disaster. So in the industry period, 100 students, we only use one methodology to teach. But in the digital period, 100 students, we might have, and we should have probably, 120 ways of, of teaching. Because we need to have the 20% extra, because 20% extra students, they may like me, never all be the rules. So we need to have 100 students, have 120 ways of teaching. In the industrial period, we make people like a machine. In the digital period, we make a machine like people. Education must reform. Schools must, must reform. Teachers need to reform. And classroom needs to reform. In the past, the teachers give students knowledge in the class. But in the future, students and teachers may work together to learn. In the past, teachers know more than the students. In the future, students may be no more than the teachers. In the past, one class 40 minutes, one class 40 students. And every day we have like seven classes. This standardization, I don't know where it comes from, but it should be designed for industry period. In order to use limited resources, as few resources as possible to train as many people as possible. So 200 years passed, the industry period is moving to the digital period. We have to live rethinking what are the education, the content, the way we teach to the people. In the past, classroom is to supposed to teach students the right answers. But in the future, most of the things, we don't have answers. Teachers may not know. Experts may not know. Nobody knows. We have to learn and work out together. In the past, classroom uh, in the class. In the future, classroom they are in the real world. I was in, in Israel last year, discussed with the minister of Israel. Why in Israel, a lot of kids, a lot of young people are so independent. He told me, you know, there are a lot of kids, they have to go to the uh, remote areas, mountain areas, to learn how to survive. The kids always have to face dangers. Education is not to prevent our kids from not having dangerous things, no problems. But education is to train our kids to face the dangers, face the ways when problem comes. In the past, in China especially, we, put, we lock our kids to keep the kids closer. How could you? You know, this is a very different cultural way. I found the China soccer team is a terrible soccer team. For 1.4 billion people, we cannot select 11 people to, <laughs> to win Maldives, which is only 20,000 people. <laughs> There's something wrong with the culture, something wrong with the education. You know, when our kids, our parents never want us to ask questions and challenge questions. When we face conflicts, we three. So our football players, they take the goal into the, into the front. When people stand up, we all run away. <laughs> so people say, China have no rules. I think there's China rules. If there's something, there is a net in the middle, we always do that good. If there's no net in the middle, we're all in trouble. Basketball, football, we're all in trouble. If there's a ping pong, you know, we're good. <laughs> Singles, we're all good. But one child a family, one child, every child is the king of the family. 
We learn to teamwork. If the kids do not learn to teamwork, how can China teamwork with the other world, with other countries? This is all about education. The world has changed. We cannot imagine that in the classroom, we lock the students, they learn the skills to face the future challenge. It's impossible. The future education is about to teach our kids to survive in the outside world, to solve the problems when we confront the conflicts. It's impossible that you don't have any comforts. But you have to face the comforts and solve the comforts in a confrontation. So this is a lot of challenges that we have for education. That need not education, as experts need editors like us. Need people from every field, everywhere, to working together. And I don't like a lot of G2, G20, G, G whatever meetings. They always have questions. There's no directions. We need directions. We need leaderships. We need to know where is the future. How we can do it together. So this is the most, we are not coming here to complain. We come here to looking for solutions. So as an editor, the beginner of education, I feel guilty. Myself, I only teach in the school for six years. And now I think I have the resources. I retired from chairman of Alibaba position. I put most of my time on education. And I will learn from you, discuss with you, debate with you, fight with you. I have some editor suggestions. In China, I give one first suggestion is let's put most of our resources from university, PhD, master degree, to primary school, kindergarten, middle schools. That is more, it's too late when you try to change a university students about. Most, lots of the functions of the human beings, you have to you have to train them when they are still in kindergartens, in the primary schools. I found, especially most of the developing countries, they always want to compete. You know, one of my university in this country is a ranking number, what, what, what are numbers in the world? We should have a ranking, what kind of kindergartens, primary schools, middle schools and that. So please put more resources on the front instead of the back. And the second, it's also very important. We should, we should fight for the teachers. And I absolutely agree with the report on ECD that the ads were talking about. We should, if we respect teachers, we respect knowledge. We respect education. We respect the future. Education is about the future. So we should give teachers the best recognitions. We should give the teachers the best to pay. Because if we respect them, and they will respect the jobs, they will respect their kids. And I think everybody is talking about education is important. When we talk about budget, that's another thing. Right, I think. And the other thing, teachers are important. We are, we, I think mean, my foundation will be working on the China rural area education. There are about more than 30 million kids studying in the rural areas in China. There are about close to 3 million rural area teachers. About, you know, five or six years ago. Today we have like 2.7 million rural area teachers. We find to helping kids in the rural areas, the best way is helping teachers. A good teacher can help 200 students in his life at least. If you cannot inspire teachers, the teachers, how can they inspire the kids? So we do a lot of work. Finally, we find a lot of teachers give up teaching in the rural areas. You know what? Because they don't, 60% of them give up jobs because they don't like headmasters. They hate their headmasters. Because none of the headmasters got a one day training how to be a headmaster. And this is the problem I find in many, many areas. Those have, these teachers have been there for teaching for 10 years and become a headmaster. They don't know what is accounting, what is a leadership, what is. Headmaster is supposed to be the minister of the village, of their local towns. So we realize that we should focus on headmaster. A headmaster can influence 100 teachers. A teacher can influence 200 students. That is the system. And what a minister of education is supposed to do, he should make policies to enable headmaster to do a better job. Headmasters should do better jobs to enable teachers to do a better job. Teachers, and then they should spend time to inspire the kids.
And we should, with the technology revolution, we should inspire and encourage more excellent. Those people who have knowledge does not mean he, he knows how to teach. Right? Michael Tyson's boxing training. If they have competition, I don't think he has a chance to win Michael Tyson. It's the people who inspire, the people who know how to teach. So we should focus a lot on that. And the third is that we need that quickly change the KPI of education, not test, 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 test results. We have to change the test, the formulas. If we think examination is the only way, the standard for the education, if that is the key KPI, I don't think mm. education will go to the right direction. So I ask a lot of uh, high school students in China, What's your hobby? What do you want to do in the future? I said, I don't know. He said, I don't know. I just want to go to a good university. Why do you want to go to university? I don't know. I just want to go to university. <laughs> that is the problem. Many senior, student, senior high school students, they don't know what they want to do. They just don't want to go to university. Because they think university is the guarantee of jobs. From my 20 years experience in Alibaba, we found university. You know, most of the universities where they graduate, we have to train them absolutely, totally different. University does not mean you will guarantee the jobs. We don't hire people from Harvard to MIT because they are Harvard to MIT. They have the way to learn. We hire those people because they're ready to learn. They want to change. They want to create. They want to learn all their lives. We hire them. Not because, for me, those people got a master's degree or doctorate degree. It's just the receipt of the tuition his father paid. <laughs> the real master degree is when you finish, you get a degree and start to fight for your life. You prove when you're 70 years old or 80 years old. I don't care whether you're a PhD. We have, a we have more PhD today than we can imagine. Does it want to change a lot? No, not necessarily. If we need people really think Life school, the school of, of the society, the school of the world is a real education. And the, the training is that make the people learning all their life, make people have confidence for the future. The next thing is we need to teach our kids with three cues. The education is not only kids love learning. And we have to teach our kids learn to love. People pay extreme attention to IQ, to EQ. If you want to be successful, you should have very high EQ. Easy to get on people with you, people support you. But if you don't want to lose quickly, you should have good IQ. Smart people, they know. But if you want when if you want to be respected, you should have the LQ, the Q of love. The cue of love is from your heart, not from brain. The brain will be replaced by machines. Machine can never replace your heart. Machine can only have chips. You don't have, have the heart. And the heart is where the love, where the wisdom comes from. So, and also we think that all the kids in the future should have a global view, global vision, and full picture vision and future vision. The global vision, I think when we were kids in China, I, I hope if I do in my school now, I'm, I, we are building a, a primary school, a middle school in Hangzhou for my testing. For two years, I'm very happy about the result. But one thing I want to do in the primary school, I want to, every kid in the primary school have at least 1,000 Oriental stories, 1,000 Western stories. For our kids, they should never separate the West and the East. To them, you should never start to train them when they are senior school, university. They say, oh, this is Western history, this is Chinese history, this is Western religion, this is Chinese religion, this is Chinese history. That's very complicated. Kids should learn the global vision. Respect the world. Respect the other race. Respect the other culture. Respect the other religion. When they, every student in every country, every school, they should learn from them. <laughs> Instead of the trouble, the the world today, results of the, of the education system. 
the things we teach our kids. They feel proud for my race. They never respect the others. They're proud for their religion. And they never listen. I was in a way that people challenging me. That, you know, is what? You know, the Chinese Buddhism. Crazy. This was a sir. Have you ever read one book about Buddhism? Or one book about Taoism? One sentence or one article about Confucius. He said, no. I said, I read seven times of Bibles. And I respect. I know where you're from. But you don't know us. How can you don't know somebody and criticize? If you want to criticize, better start to learn. And then you should have a vision of full picture. Nobody can learn a full vision picture if you do your individual. You have to be a teamwork. Teamwork sports is very important. Otherwise, I don't think China have hope for, for, for the suckers. <laughs> and last vision, uh, the other vision we have is a future vision. We have to solve problems for future. Today, the world focuses too much on solving today's problem or yesterday's problem. Let's think about the future. There is only future. And how can you solve the future problem? The future problem is human being, machine are very alike. I'm happy to see the Chinese good at the math, the reading, the skills very important. But the other important thing is how can our kids to be more creative, constructive, and productive, innovative? That is teach arts. I think dancing is important, singing is important, painting is important. Sports is important. My school, if I don't force people to learn afterward. I will force people to learn arts, sports after their schools. So, every child when they come to the world, they just build up their own business. Like an entrepreneur. It's a startup. A startup, you learn to work with the others. You learn to solve problems. You learn to get support and get help. And I think in the future, what kind of people we want to be, how we want to be, what kind of life we need, uh, that decided by education. What education today we're doing is decide the future of human beings. And what people today decide the education of tomorrow. So my first job is a teacher. And I hope my last job it's working together with you. I'm doing something on the education. I'm an editor, but I will want to learn. I want to learn from you. I want to debate with you. I'm working with you. Let's find a solution for the future. Thank you so much.